Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here. Today we're going to be discussing Okinawa and the U.S. military. And pretty much the locals' views of the U.S. military. Now, if you watch anything on the media, or you've heard anything about it, it's always going to be the same bullshit, basically, is what I'm going to get to. Just call out what it is. It's bullshit. So, I've got my phone up here. We've got local crimes in Okinawa, pulled up immediately. If you look at the results, it's all going to be the same. It's not going to be crimes committed by the local populace in Okinawa. It's going to be crimes committed by U.S. servicemen, and it's going to be the same six or seven crimes every time. Now, if you look at the first one, it's going to be crimes of U.S. servicemen in Okinawa is the first result. Not even crimes by locals, not crimes Okinawa crimes against Okinawans, not Okinawan crimes against U.S. military, or U.S. service members, or U.S. citizens for that matter. U.S. crimes against Okinawans. And it's going to be a very, very small percentage, as we're going to get to shortly. So, basically, what I'm getting to is the Fatima protest you see all the time. That shit. It's all the same bullshit every time. And if you talk to any, practically any decent Okinawan, they're, they generally love and embrace the military and our presence here. They love what we do. They love that we keep the island safe. They love that we invest into the economy, that we provide them with the tourism. They love that Marines go off base practically every day to buy curry from Kokoichi's. We stop by a local Lawson, get some chew highs, get Benjos, have a good time. They know that it's a very small percentage of very, very stupid, stupid people who go out and commit these crimes. Now, I'm going to get into this because I actually had to write a paper several years ago where I got to look into all these issues, and basically the questions we're going to answer today is, well, why are they protesting if so many of them love us? Why are they keeping up this narrative? And we're going to be discussing what actual crime rate rates are comparing the percentage of U.S. personnel here compared to the Okinawan locals and how many crimes are committed. Let's say per thousand people. That's basically what we're going to get to because it's all going to be in a decimal. It's going to be less than 1% for each side. How else are we going to answer? We're going to answer a few other things about the Osprey and all that. And basically we're going to debunk all this and get this done with and taken care of so that at least you'll be less likely to believe the lies perpetuated by the media basically for the interest of making money off of you or anyone who's dumb enough to believe it. So, obviously, there's a protest outside Fatenma, practically over the day, with people complaining about various stuff, either Osprey's falling from the sky and gonna kill everyone, or that everyone who wears Marpat uniforms is a rapist, or any of that nonsense. But anyway, so whenever they talk about crime, any crime, any crime whatsoever, they're gonna refer the, uh, the big crimes that have happened in the past. Really heinous stuff, so, 1995, gang rape of a 12 year old schoolgirl. Pretty bad. Pretty bad in any scenario. Let's see, uh, from there we had a... Uh, so that was said pretty much every time. There was a crime, notable in the past, although the year wasn't given, of an Okinawa woman who was beaten to death in her own home. Pretty bad. There's a 2002 sexual assault. Big issue. Uh, 2008, you had a Marine accused of raping a 14 year old schoolgirl. The charge was technically dropped and reduced to inappropriate touching. Still pretty bad, but every time it's reported, it's going to be rape. They're not, they're not going to lower it to reality. And what they never talk about with all these terrible crimes is the amount of Okinawans who end up being guilty of the same heinous crimes of rape, assault, and murder. If you look into it in Japanese, you might find a few things, but what you're mostly going to find is when you're watching local television news. Just, was it like last year, a year or two before that? A dude, a Japanese local, who was super high on mushrooms or something. That I, I never heard what it actually was. He, was. he was drugged out of his mind, basically. Goes wandering down the street, finds an old guy on a scooter, and he's probably lighting up a cigarette, because that's what old dudes on scooter do. Old guys on scooters do at red lights. And basically produced a large knife from his bag, walked up to said unobserved scooter, and pff, right in the neck, just bled out everywhere. Huge issue on the, on the Okinawa news. You won't find a word of it anywhere else. But yeah, it was, it was a good time. They were doing a uh, drill that day or whatever. So, pretty much crime rates. We're going to do a quick little comparison here. So, in 1998, while this crime was going on, 0.18% uh, of local crimes, let's see, one of the local population, yeah, local crime committed by the local population, is 0.18%. So 18 people out of every, what, thousand, I'm like one person 
every thousand or so. So it's a very, very small position, 0.18%. And the same, that same year, the U.S. military committed 0 0.09, about half as many crimes per person. So for every thousand military and every thousand locals, you know, like one person on the American side and for every two Japanese committing a crime. Pretty, uh, pretty big deal. And of course, the Okinawa population is way, way more massive than the U.S. military here, so there's that to take into account. Then in uh, 2003, in 2003, there was a spike in crime, and at that time, it was every three Okinawan locals, so 0.29%, and the American percentage was still just lower at 026 so about 0 0.03 difference. Still pretty close. Same about per capita issue. But in 2006, remind you, military still way smaller numbers. So you might have four service members committing crimes to a couple hundred locals that year. And mind you, these are all violent, heinous crimes of assault, rape, murder, and all that good stuff. In 2006, however, the local crime continued to ascend up to 0.3%. So we're getting up there three people for every thousand or so. And then the actual military numbers was still about half of that, despite being a smaller number, 0.14%. So as you can see, there's definitely a lot more local crime going on, but only the U.S. crimes game reported on. So, where do we go from here? Well, let's talk about Futenma and their, wanting, their plans to relocate. Now, they wanted to move it to Hainoko, they've debated moving it to Guam, and you might ask yourself, why don't they move the bases up to mainland Japan. Mainland Japan has a far larger area to work with. They're closer to Korea, so if anything goes down in Korea, you have faster response times. I mean, and I've argued, there's been argument that the military likes to be in Okinawa because it keeps them closer and stuff. No, no, it has nothing to do with that claim, unfortunately. The Marines, and I know any other Marine who's currently serving, has served or anything, can tell you Marines can successfully operate out of any location ever. So it doesn't have to be Okinawa. It could be mainland. It could be off of a small boat that's been floating there for probably even years by this point. Does not matter. So, all that aside, so Futema, they've been moving it and stuff, so you ask yourself, why don't they move it to mainland? Now, quite simply, after World War II, there were actually several plans with the Korean War and everything. Korean War, Vietnam and stuff. Coming to Bay what was it? It's actually... Yeah, so the Korean War, after World War II, we had a few army bases here, little tents and stuff set up. Korean War starts rolling around, and the Marines basically want to set up a posture to be ready to move into Korea. Well, initially they were going to set up in mainland, like I'm debating here, but in 1953, up in Ishikawa Prefecture and Nagano Prefecture, the plans on building any sort of firing range or sort of base were uh, shut down pretty effectively by what? Protest. Protests similar to happening here, but happening on mainlands at the same time. Have it up here, yeah. In, uh, where was it? There was another protest in Sunagawa. They're trying to build, like, Air, air Force. Was it an airbase or. Yeah, they're planning on expanding an airbase up there. But they had what was known as the 1954 Sunagawa Uprising. You can actually look that up on Wikipedia, where basically people ran out onto the fire, onto the airfield. They grabbed arms, they laid down in the runway, they caused all sorts of problems. Basically, while all this is happening, people are going to the government in Tokyo, and they're like, Hey, WTF, why do you have military expansion of a mainland? No, you can't be having that. We will protest, we will riot, and we have access to all these government buildings that we can start problems and cause issues. People will see what happens if we make noise in Tokyo. So if they did, at this time, they're like, well... Here's an idea, we'll send them back to Okinawa. Because Okinawa will come by and they'll complain a bit, but we can shell out some cash and we can basically tell them to fuck off. And that's pretty much what Tokyo's plan has been. That's what they've been doing ever since. They just tell Okinawa, hey, deal with it. We can't have these protests up in mainland, but you're, you're more expendable. So it really is very, very little to do with the military and more of what the fact that mainland never wanted us up there. And even now, I'm willing to wager that if you try to get any base built or expansion put up on mainland, the huge political backlash on Tokyo will never permit to happen. They'd rather move to Hainoko and possibly disturb the precious dugons, which will probably be fine, it's nature, but... They'd rather move to Hainoko, still in Okinawa, a small little 
percentage of, Oka of uh, Japan than moving anything onto mainland. So that's the big issue. Now let's go into the Osprey. Now there's concerns that the Osprey might fall out of the sky. Not gonna happen. VTOL's pretty effective and successful these days. But they complain about all the aircraft flying around, all the noise it produces. Well, they do these complaints because living close to the airbase will actually get you a government stipend to deal with the horrible, unbearable sounds from Futenma that will keep you awake at 2 in the afternoon when you probably should be at work or doing something anyway, unless you're sleeping during the day. But anyway, from all the story is, these aircraft noises are actually sufficiently quieter than all the protesters who are complaining about them. Not to mention, they also have these government vans they'll go around and they'll blast music telling you which party you should vote for or who you should elect into the diet or any of that stuff. And they're loud and they're obnoxious and no one likes them. But they're not flying in the sky or run by another country. So despite the fact that they're two to three times louder than any Osprey, any helicopter, any aircraft in the area, people are kind of just okay with it. And they go far longer. They'll go up until what, 6, 7 p.m. It's blasting noise, keeping everyone awake. And it's not just them. There's the Bozo Zoko scooter gangs. Now these scooter gangs are basically kids who either work construction jobs or they don't work at all. They keep a little stipend from their parents and they put really loud mufflers, they tie megaphones and stuff to the scooter, and they roll around from about 2200 to like 5 a.m. and they do the same thing. <laughs> It's the most single frustrating, infuriating thing in the world. And on few, far rarer occasions, they might throw a brick through your black, back, through your, uh, back window. Because, hey, they're fucking punks who have no respect for the rest of society and they do what they want, I guess. I don't know. And of course, you can't necessarily go physically assault them, which is the fastest way to stop them, because the police probably won't be too keen on it. So yes, there are a... A lot of the crimes that do happen, if the, if Americans ever decide to move out and actually deal with the Bozozokas themselves against the police and ineffective, ineffective responses, it would get pretty ugly pretty fast. And the scooter gangs would probably complain about their right to make all these noises, but they would occasionally get pulled over by the cops, but it's a very small, rare, in-between thing. Oh, they also like to run through red lights, so if you hit one of them, I mean, you won't go to jail or anything, but if you're someone who scars psychologically very easy at the fact that someone used your car to kill themselves and you start internalizing all that doubt and stuff, you're going to feel like a bad person for their poor decisions. Anyway, so yeah, you got Bozozokus and stuff making far more noise at far less convenient hours. And yeah, you don't get paid for it. So, all these protests, is it just to get paid for coping with the great stress of the U.S. military? No. It is not. A lot of the protesters you see out here aren't even Okinawan, mind you. They are teenagers and young adults who are doing college up in mainland who need some extra money. So certain shady individuals come along, buy them a flight to Okinawa, and pay them a couple hundred thousand dollars to hold a sign and protest and be on the news. So you might be asking yourself, well, what benefit do they get protesting? What will actually happen? What happens if we get enough Okinawans to hate the military, if we get the military kicked out or anything? Well, I'm not saying that China's been building their own islands or posturing around this area. And I'm definitely not saying that were Okinawa to suddenly become defenseless, they would roll out in here with boats and claim they've owned Okinawa since the beginning of time, when it was a tributary to China. They annexed it into their country and Japan just happened to have claimed it in that time but it's technically Chinese territory and they want it back now. Nah, China would never do something like that. So surely they wouldn't pay people with tons of government money from China to go protest down in Okinawa to reduce the military presence to pretty much set them up for a very simple takeover like say if North Korea got uppity with South Korea and the military moved on up there from mainland Japan because no one was left in Okinawa it wouldn't be easy pickings. I mean, I know they're grabbing Taiwan is right next door. So yeah, basically it is pretty much for the prefront of a military takeover. But what the, what the media will have you believe is that the military bases here make Okinawa target 
Four wind missiles start flying to and fro and around and start murdering people. Well, yes and no. I mean, they would only have to knock out the police stations at this point. It'd be a very simple takeover given the fact that there's only a few JSDF bases out here, so. Same, so anyway, you get rid of all these military. Not to mention, the military does, like I said earlier, go out into town, they buy a bunch of curry, they buy alcohol, they buy, go to bars and everything, and they invest massive swathing amounts of cash into the into the local uh, businesses and everything. Which, basically, if the U.S. bases were to leave, outside of the immediate military threat, outside of the military threat, there is a far quick, faster stagnation that would occur, with tons of bars shutting down, as they did when the when the military stopped letting Marines and stuff drink off base. Bars would shut down, you would lose a ton of business, various malls and everything would shut down, and Okinawa would basically just stagnate. You would still have some tourism, but the tourism numbers they claim are bringing in all this business and stuff isn't simply people coming to visit. They do include political visits from mainland, so all the politicians and stuff who fly in, and they also do all the uh, space safe flights and everything, so everyone who's flying in here on military orders and stuff is included in that tourist number, which would be sufficiently smaller without them. So technically not even the tourism would keep Okinawa afloat without the military here. So that's pretty much everything by this point. So basically it's all a cra it's all a cash grab. I mean, the military could work possibly even more effectively up in mainland, but mainland doesn't want all these rapes and everything. So they actually have kind of they kind of shot themselves in the foot here, because if they did truly want to get rid of the military, they would talk about how great for business it is, how effective it is in bringing in customers, and how it's allowed Okinawa to really flourish, especially with the diving sites. They would be talking about all that great stuff, because then mainland would be like, hey, this is a business opportunity, having all these marines and everything here, despite a few crime issues every now and then, would bring in a ton of money and business and everything for us. But no, they talk about how every, basically every Marine is a murderer and a rapist. And if mainland hears that, they're not going to want them there. you are like, no, you keep them down there. We will protest again. So they shot themselves in the foot. And basically now the Marine Corps can't go anywhere outside of here. So unless they were to change that narrative, which would actually possibly even get bases moved up there and reduce the footprint in Okinawa, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much the only way they're going to be able to do it, is be like, hey, these Marines are great, they put in all this money, they do great things for the community, they do all sorts of uh, beach cleaning, and they clean up the local populace popula and everything, and go pick up trash, basically. They do all sorts of great things for the community. No, since they don't talk about that, that's why they're going to stay here. They talked about it, they yeah, should be able to move everyone up there and pff, technically solve their problem, but mm, uh, they don't get paid to talk about how great the military is and all the good things we do here so since they're getting paid to talk about other things that's what it comes down to anyway this is like small less than one percent of the okinawan population who actually buys and believes this stuff it's the same old people on tv every time telling you about how they fear for their lives every time an aircraft is in the sky because modern technology is over their heads not to be ageist or anything but that's that's what's happening it's not me just rate stereotyping everyone into an age group no it's what's actually happening same people on tv you can look at it the videos, and it's a few young people who make poor decisions, or people who are getting paid to protest. And that's what you'll see every time, if you watch it long enough. And I've been here for over eight years now, so I have seen it. I've seen it plenty of times. And as much as I could call out for being bullshit, the most I can do is upload this video, and hopefully present you with a few of these facts I found throughout my time in college, and doing some research, and just being out and about. And facts that have been verified by several of my Okinawan friends, I basically said, yeah, they do it for the money, they do it for the attention, they do it because it makes them feel relevant, and it gets them paid, and that's all they really want. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you, hopefully. This has been enjoyable. If you've been one of those who wonder why there's all these protests and everything, it's bullshit. It's not our, it's not our fault. It's no one's fault but the few individuals who committed the crimes in the past and continue to do so today. So, that's all I have for you guys. Hope everyone's doing well, and uh, yeah, stay chivalrous, and uh, don't sweat all these terrible things happening in Okinawa, because it's such a small, isolated incident that really doesn't concern the majority of people, and most of the Okinawans, when something terrible happens, generally don't care, they're more focused on the local things. So I'm about out of time, so I'll see you in the next video, everyone. Cheers, stay chivalrous.